Thank you for having me today. Um, we actually conduct a lot of these workshops with Discovery employees. We found that people were getting into the organization and, and a lot of people have had trouble getting into Discovery. And then once they get there, it's still, it might not be the exact desired job that they want. And it's not really your end point. So we were finding that the early careerists or people that were getting into Discovery were really having challenges networking within the company and still making the job that they want and you know securing the career that they want. So this workshop is really about you. The joy is I'm not going to stand here and lecture you the whole time. Um, it's, it's about your transferable skills, your career path, and really voicing your opinions so that you can ultimately get to the jobs and the careers that you want. With the networking and informational interviewing, we're going to do our best to take away the pressure of that job interview, if you will. So when you go for a job interview, there's a, a lot at stake there. You're trying to introduce yourself, you're trying to get a lot across, you're trying to learn a lot about the position. So we're going to take some of that stress away and have informal networking, informal informational interviews. And we'll get a chance to practice all those skills today. My career journey sort of has, has really changed. So as my introduction said, I started out at Marriott in an IT job. And with that, I was also teaching at Prince George's Community College some of their technical courses. And I absolutely loved it, and I loved the learning side of it. So I sort of moved from doing technical training to getting into classroom facilitation like this and working with business skills and working with um, some of those soft skills. So not necessarily using a computer all day, but actually playing nice with others, interacting with people. But it's hard to even go from one side of the learning house to the other side of the learning house. I needed to put my wishes out there so that, you know, people would know and people would champion for me as well as, you know, just look for spots. I was lucky and fortunate that when I moved from Marriott to Discovery, it was because the recruiter, you know, I'd known the recruiter. So with that, the recruiter, the position came open. She said, well, I know Jessica can do most of this. Let's see if she really wants this position. So with it, that's sort of a real short introduction to my story, if you will, and we're going to work on your transferable skills. We're going to talk about the things that you're learning here in, in school, the things that you're learning in your jobs, and then how you can sort of put the two together to match your, your skills and your interests. I don't know about you guys, the jobs that you have, do you like every last aspect of it? No, me neither. Me neither. So this is just a little four box. We use the four box for, for a lot of things. But if we put skill on this side and interest on this side, this is in regards to the tasks that you do. So my job managing learning programs, I do a lot of classroom facilitation. I, I write a lot of instruction, and I actually record a lot of e-learning. So if anybody's done online courses, inside of Discovery, it's my voice. Like, click next to learn about this. And I actually do all the online pieces. I like some of it, not all of it. And ideally, I want to match my skills and my interests. So, you know, if I have high skills in technical training, that's my background, I might be here with some of it, but I no longer want to do networking and C plus stuff and all that good stuff. I want to do more business skills. I want to do more classroom facilitation, where my interests are here, and thankfully my skills are continuing to move up. Ideally, you want to be in this area. You want to match your skills with your interests. Does that make sense? Now, being a manager, I still have things that I don't like, right? There's budgeting. Mm, how much fun is budgeting? It's not. My interest is here. My skill might even be here. And, you know, eventually it'll move up, even if I don't like budgeting anymore. So there's things that are always going to lie outside of this area. But ideally, if you can put a job together that matches your skills and your interests and sort of get it into this sphere, if you will, that's what we're going to focus on today. Okay? So with that, I wanted to, I guess, get you all to introduce yourselves to each other, but in a different context than you might be used to. So the idea of networking, anybody here like the idea of networking? Yeah. What, one? All right, one person. All right, so introduce yourself to your neighbor and share with them that idea that you have in your mind of what networking is. All right. Sorry to cut you off there. Sounds like you guys all have a pretty well I guess defined definition of networking. And some of you don't like it, is what I got from some, of, you know, overhearing some of it. And some of you are sort of okay with it. Right. Yes? I wasn't really sure what networking was, but I like it. I mean, interacting with people and stuff. Absolutely. And that's where we're going, the interacting with people. Some of us like it. Some of us have the, the, envision, uh, the vision of 
going into a chamber of commerce meeting with your resume or business card and like just sort of cold introductions to each person. And that's really challenging and I'm trying to get away from that definition and getting more to interacting with people. And we're going to do it on a genuine level to incorporate interest and skills. So it's just it's connecting with people, interacting with people and sharing with them, I guess what you do, what you're good at and what you like. Right? And with that you put it out there. And you can just connect and connect and eventually get to where you're going in a career sense. So, you know, I don't know about you all and the networks that you have, but I used to play flag football. And even around flag football, that's where you meet people to, uh, you know, you need a hairdresser, you might need um, somebody to help with physical therapy, whatever it might be. And you even find people that may be in a career or a company that you're interested in. So if you actually share with them your skills and your interests, then they know. And if they happen to know of somebody and know of somebody or know of a position, we sort of get closer. So a lot of people get into discovery because they know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. You might be three steps away, right? And we just finished Thanksgiving. Did anybody network at Thanksgiving? Did you talk about your skills and your interests, if you will? And then if somebody brought a date, somebody else, somebody you haven't met in you know, your extended family, you can network and put out there your skills and your interests, if you will, and hopefully get to know that person that knows that person that knows that person as far as jobs. So yes, it is the genuine connection of just interacting with people. And we're going to do it sort of intentionally at this point in regards to career development, if you will, finding that position, networking and having informational interviews so that you can learn more about the jobs in which you're interested and also put it out there so people know who you are. They know what you're interested in. They know what you're good at. So that's sort of, I guess, our, our loose definition of networking today. And everybody should have one of these booklets. Go ahead and turn in. And we've captured the definition here. All right, so networking is a process of discovering and utilizing connections between people. In this sense, and what we're going to work on today is this connection. We're going to build a connection around our skills and our interests and hopefully get to know that person that knows that person that can help us get that job. All right. Also noted here are some of the benefits of networking. So for our definition today, it is to, it's, it's both ways. You are sharing information and you're getting information. So one of the benefits of networking is the fact that you get to talk about your skills, talk about your interests, and also learn about a position so that you can make them match. I absolutely love my job at Discovery. Reason being is also because of the environment. Not just what I get to do, but where I get to do it. I guess a lot of people have this idea of Discovery and it's fun and it's crazy. It is, you know, a lot of the time. But it's also taxing, and I work more than 40 hours a week, more than 50 hours a week. You know, but what do I get back? What's the environment? Do I get to actually be on teams? Do I like my teammates? Well, I can actually learn that information through informal interviewing, if you will, informational interviewing. I want to try them on as much as they're interviewing <coughs> me. Does that make sense? So those are the benefits of networking. That's sort of where we're aiming today. You're sharing your skills. You're sharing your interests. You're learning about what's out there. All right? Any questions? No? All right. Well, then moving on. Networking meetings. Today, we're actually going to practice informational interviewing, if you will. And with that, it's important to really develop an introduction. Because if we are at Thanksgiving or if we are just having genuine connections with people, we want to make it sort of purposeful. And I don't mean manipulative, like everybody out here is going to be an advocate for me and you're going to find me a job. I mean, we're going to have conversations. And you know, if I know that person, if you know that person, you can then advocate for me and I can advocate for you. And, and I can keep it in the back of my mind. So later, if, you're, you know, if we connect, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I know that Jessica. Jessica works for Discovery. And Discovery has a position here. I can call her. Now, granted, I'm in learning and development. I don't do anything as regards to, to TVs or anything like that. But I know the people that do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right? So let's practice informational interviewing. So you know, we're going to practice with each other here. But that's OK. I can meet that one person who will know that one person who will know that next person. Eventually, it might work out for a job. Worst case, we have some, you know, some nice conversations. Okay. We're going to develop our introduction. And if you will, we're going to turn to page four. And here's just a quick sample email. All right. If you notice that it makes a connection with the person that did the introduction. <coughs> so you would send an email, hi, Jessica said that I should reach out to you in regards to this because I have interest in this area. 
web design, if you will, right? So Discovery has discovery.com, tlc.com, and all sorts of websites, um, pet finder, things like that. So if you're into web design, web development, you would send an email to me and say, Jessica, do you know somebody in this area? So on and so forth. And if I gave you an introduction, you would have to introduce yourself, how you were making this connection, and then what your interests and skills are. Right? After the introduction, you actually need to be able to talk about your skills and your interests, and we're going to spend a lot of time on that today. I think everyone has one of these, these transferable skills worksheets. Sorry, let me see this one. Do you have one of these as well? All right, because once you get in the door, once you get a chance to meet the person that I'm introducing you to, or the person that knows the person that knows the person, what are you going to talk about? Right now, we're going to craft our discussion around transferable skills. And if you look at this worksheet, you'll notice that these skills fall under different categories. Verbal communication, nonverbal communication, written communication, training, consulting, analyzing research, planning and organizing, leadership, interpersonal relationship, counseling, all right, finance, management, construction, creative and innovative jobs. I'm going to ask you over the next couple minutes to look through here and find four transferable skills. These can be in jobs that you had in high school, if you will. These can be in jobs that you currently have. These can be the skills that you're learning in the courses that you're taking now. I want you to find at least four transferable skills and then write a little something about how you've already demonstrated these skills. Again, for me, I was a technical trainer. And being a technical trainer, you know, I got up, I talked in front of classes, even though it was a different topic. So I could talk about, you know, classroom facilitation, if you will, and then how I did that, right? If I've handled money, this, you know, I, I was in charge of registers, this many, you know, and to what extent was I working with money? So I want you to identify four transferable skills and write how you've already demonstrated these skills. Absolutely, it is challenging to come up with the story behind it, but you also have to tell your story. So if you, if you want to get into project management, what projects have you managed? And really getting it out there and telling your story so that other people can receive it. You know, you all seem like very nice people. However, how do I know that you can manage this project that I have for you? You know, you'd have to have that story behind it that says, well, I've managed these projects successfully. So it's, it is a challenge. And, you know, at least today we have a little bit of time to practice that. But it can be challenging. What else? Anybody else find it difficult to identify the transferable skills? No. Some of you had a number of checks, which is fabulous. You're talented people. Mm -hmm. right? It's important to identify the ones that you want to transfer. Right? So I mentioned budgeting before. I'm actually really good at it. Um, I am. So thankfully, it's up here. But you know what? If I, rent, if I wanted a budgeting type job, I'd get a, you know, a position in finance or something of that sort. I don't want that. It's part of my job, I respect that, but as far as transferable skills, I don't lead with that. Hi, I'm Jessica and I'm good at budgeting. You know, because then you'd say, oh, okay, well, I'll put her in a budgeting role. Or, you know what, I won't even listen at this point because it's not a good match. So it's challenging. You wanna lead with the transferable skills that really interest you, you know? And maybe your skill is down here. That's why I'm trying to get this entry level position so I can get up here, you know, that my skills and interests will match. But that's okay, how have you demonstrated something to get you going there. Does that make sense? So it's important now with these transferable skills, I know I just gave you what, five minutes to look through a, a ton of skills, right? This is just the intro to it, if you will. But you want to identify transferable skills so that we can learn more, you know, use them as the majority of our job, if you will, and sort of direct our conversations and our potential careers in the right direction. Does that make sense? All right. Did anybody find it really easy? Like I would do this all the time. Well, the good news is you get to take it with you, right? And you can, you can think about it later today. Okay. Any questions from identifying transferable skills? Does that still apply to a certain career? Yeah. Do they always have to apply to a certain career? Not necessarily. It depends on, on what you're looking for. So I, ideally, the, the story behind the networking and the informational interviewing is that you're looking to match your skills with a position. So you would want to identify the, you know, which skills you want to take with you. But I think a lot of our initial jobs and career choices and even jobs while we were in school and in high school, I learned a lot about what I didn't want to do. 
you know, so as I look through that, I can cross things off. Never again will I be doing journal <laughs> entries and never again will I be doing this. It's important to identify that so you can keep it, you know, away from your career path. So, you know, do you have to only include the things that you want to do and you're good at? You don't have to. But the, the opportunity with networking and informational interviewing is to really match the ones that you want to take with you. So that, that you know, it's important in that regard. But I also, you have to respect the fact that you're not going to have your ideal job, you know, right after school. Maybe some of you will. But there's going to be pieces of your job that you have to do that you don't like. You might not even know how to do it. Or maybe you are good at it. So there's, there's always something there. But an activity like this at least allows you to realize which would you like to get into this quadrant, right? So if we could build a job around your skills and your interests, that's sort of what this activity gives us a chance to do, all right? And now we're gonna put it all back together. We're gonna talk about our skills, we're gonna talk about our interests, and we're actually gonna get a chance to learn about a potential position. So we're sort of faking it in class, if you will, but we're gonna pretend as if we're working towards that informational interview. And with that, we need to have an introduction and really, you know, who you intend to meet. Who is that person that knows that person that knows that person that could eventually get you that position? Or who is that next person? Maybe you have access to them now. So that's on the next page. On page um, six and seven is where we're going to spend some time developing our script. And again, this is to focus our efforts. If you get an informational interview, you probably have 20 to 30 minutes with someone. And a lot of people like to talk about themselves, so they'll probably be very happy to give you the time. Oh, you want to meet with me? Sure, absolutely. I'll tell you all about myself, right? No worries there. But even then, you know, 20 to 30 minutes is probably the max you want for an informational interview because there's no job at stake. That pressure's gone that maybe they don't even have a position to offer you. Keep it short. So with that, you want to have an introduction. You want to talk about your skills. And you also need to ask about what they do, what they you know, did prior to this job, what skills do they bring with them, which ones do they need, which ones will you need, if, you, if that makes sense. You can ask questions around the responsibilities of a position, what is, you know, a potential career path, things like that. It's okay to also bring this with you because you look prepared, right? So we're going to write ourselves some notes right now, and then we're going to have some informational interviews. Page seven. Ideally, if you could find the person that you want to meet, who would that person be? Maybe you can identify that person by level, experience, background, contacts, whatever it might be. Right? What do you hope to gain from a meeting? Again, the answer is not a job at this point. Eventually, we want a job. But if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I want to get into Discovery, oh my goodness, I want to start working at Montgomery College or whatever it may be, you know, what do you want to gain by my 20 to 30 minutes with you? Cash, yeah, right? So it, it may be cash, it may be a job, job security, all those great things. But what do you potentially want to get out of your 20 to 30 minute meeting? You want to get another advocate that can speak on your behalf. You want to get the connection and the introduction to someone else and so on and so forth. I want to know if what you have to, you know, your path, if it even meets, you know, matches mine. Does it meet my interests? Mm, thanks, but no thanks, right? Once upon a time, I was a big computer nerd. I absolutely loved like putting computers together, networking my house, all that good stuff. And I was done. Didn't want to do it anymore. I was very skilled in it. I no longer had interest. So I needed to move. Where could I take my skills? How could I continue to go forward? And I started doing some training on hardware and software, if you will. So then I needed to learn more about training. And how else can I take, where else can I take that? How else can I use these skills? I needed to continue to learn, but I, I was ideally trying to match my skills and my interests, develop additional skills, you know, and ultimately get here. But I have to do that one informational interview at a time, if you will. So out of 20, 30 minutes, what do you hope to gain from a meeting? What particular skills do you want to highlight? So we sort of wrote that down already on the previous page, but pick two and you're going to include them in your conversation. All right. So take a few minutes, jot yourself a few notes and then I'll pair you up so you can have informational interviews. The first one here, who is the individual you want to meet? 
Do you all have access to the people that you'd like to meet or the companies in which you're interested in and the jobs? Yes? No. Not direct access. Okay. Well, there's, some of you don't even know exactly what you want to do. All right. So that's, that's cool. That's why we're here. But with that, you sort of need to make a step and so that you can even find your way there. So some of the things, if you don't know what you want to do, then ultimately you're probably open to a lot of things. And that's okay, because then you'll find out the things you don't like to do. Um, but you need to start somewhere. So it might be you know, an entry-level job in a certain position that interests you. I'm sorry, a certain company that interests you. Or it just might be, you know, I'm really open to anything where I can use these skills. But how do you even find out about that anything? You have to talk about your skills. So with the finding the individual, I guess, that you'd like to meet, some of you have it identified and some of us don't. And I wanted to talk about potential ways to identify additional people. What access to networks do you currently have that might help you find people, find places to start to have informational interviews to find out even if this is a place that you could use your skills? What networks do you currently have? I'll give you a freebie. Your family, right? Your peers right here, your friends. Internships. Internet, what does the internet mean? It's not just all of them. Social networks. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Transferable skills. LinkedIn just completely changed their interface. I don't know if anybody was already on LinkedIn, but now you can endorse everybody for like one skill at a time, if you will. But LinkedIn is a great way to identify people in positions in companies, you know, and where they're using certain skill sets, if you will. So that's one way to sort of answer that first one. Um, yeah, your friends, your family, your genuine connections, your peers here in the classrooms. And especially when you get into the specialty courses, if you will, that are behind your degrees, those are other people that are interested in similar stuff and may have access to the people and to the jobs where you can use your skills. Right. So if you had trouble identifying that first person, hopefully that helps a little bit and sort of move you forward. Right. We're going to put it all together now. We're going to have informal informational interviews. I don't know, does anybody in here have a job to offer? No? Excellent. There's no stress, right? We get to practice. There's no job at stake right now. But potentially we could meet someone who might know the right person. So we're not going to pair off as far as skills or industries that we're interested in. You get to talk to the person that's seated, that's seated near you, right? And you're going to do this page six and page seven, if you will. Hi, thank you for meeting with me today. You know, um, this is what I'm interested in. These are the skills that I have. This is how I've demonstrated these skills. Do you use skills like this in a position? And again, maybe this is not the person you wanted to meet. So they're going to do their best to fake it. OK, if that makes sense. So if you're like, oh my gosh, Jessica, I've always wanted to have a learning position. Well, maybe I know a little bit about learning. You know, so you're going to say, these are the skills I have. And I'm going to, you know, excellent. Well, this is my background. These are the things that we do here, and so on and so forth. Does that make sense? When I did this the first time, somebody went to get into mechanical engineering. Trust me, I am not a mechanical engineering expert, but I can fake it, right? And the best way to fake it is to ask questions. So I'm going to pretend that you're the mechanical engineer, and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, this, I'm a mechanical engineer. This is what I've studied. This is what I've done. You know, do you use skills like this? Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ask questions. Oh, well, what do you like most about being a mechanical engineer? You know, well, what else have you done? Well, what's different than you know, chemical engineering. I don't know. I don't know anything about engineering. But if you are partnering with someone that has a specialty that you have absolutely no idea what they're talking about, ask them questions. Ask them how they've demonstrated these transferable skills. They said they have them. Let them talk. So you're going to be a really good partner. Okay? You're a good partner and you're going to allow this person to talk about their transferable skills. Because that's a skill in itself to be able to talk about yourself. Ideally, I want to be able to match my skills and my interests. You said you have project management experience? Oh, what, what have you managed? What size projects? What do you like most about project management? You know, things like that. Does that make sense? 
Okay, so we are going to pair up. One person is going to practice first, and you're going to eyeball each other and say, okay, I'll go first. And that means I'm talking about my transferable skills. I'm going to thank her for meeting with me today. And then start talking about myself. And then I'm going to ask her genuine questions because this is genuine networking. What did you do? You know, what, project manage what projects do you have here? Things of that sort. What questions do you have before we pair off? I see some smiles as in you're really looking forward to this. <laughs> All right, stick to topic because now you get a chance to really practice talking in this sense. And yes, it's still genuine, but it is sort of scripted, if you will. You have page six and seven with your script. It's okay to read today, we're practicing. What I really want to talk about really is the fact that we're sort of putting all this together. You are welcome to flounder around, you know, but this is sort of trying to help you get past that. My undergrad degree is in marketing. I've never had a sales or marketing job, right? Um, it just, it worked that way. And in truth, I've made like two left turns in my career. And you, and you have to sort of flounder around a bit. But you have access to people and to your career services department that will help you sort of, you know, get past a lot of that. So some of you are saying, like, I don't even know what I want to do. I don't. Well, that's okay. There's actually a group here that can help you identify your transferable skills and where you may apply them. This was, what, a five-minute look at transferable skills. They have much more powerful, um, specific assessments, if you will, to help you so that you don't have to flounder. You don't have to figure out the hard way that you don't like it and that you're not good at it. They'll help you identify what you potentially like and what you might potentially be good at. It's easier to, to figure it out through their assessment tools than to flounder through it. And then each step of the way, continue to think about, you know, what interests you and what you're good at. And continue to network generally. Ask people questions. And if that's uncomfortable, just engage with people genuinely. Ask about their stories. And if you're looking for what your career might be, or if you're looking for your next job, then you really need to put it out there, right? And then your career and your job might be able to find you. I sort of want to move us forward to page eight, which is marketing yourself continuously. Because believe me, hiring managers, a good hiring manager is always thinking about the talent they have and the talent they need. So they're thinking about you know, the, the people that currently work for them, and if any of them are growing and ready to leave, or whatever trends are coming, they're always thinking and they're always looking to hire. And for you, you know, as you go out and get your, your jobs, your careers, and things of that sort, you always need to be thinking about what you're doing, what you like, and how you can make that, you know, what you do match your interests. So recognize that it takes that time. Understand that management is constantly thinking about their talent and what's happening next. Get in front and proactively network. So again, make it genuine, less pressure. Practice those skills. Develop advocates in the organization who know the quality of your work. Let me add to that also that can speak to you being a pleasant person. Nobody wants to work with someone unpleasant. So if you can connect with someone genuinely, that's great. Then they'll say, oh, this person's nice to talk to, nice to be around, maybe even nice to work with. And if they like you, they're more willing to teach you the skills. So if you're in these two boxes, that's OK. They'll help you build that skill set and get past that. Right? Communicate your interests to those that are advocating for you. Just communicate your interests to everyone. And I don't mean in that, in that friendship way, like, I need a job, I need a job, I need a job, I need a job. But just genuinely, you know, this is what I like. This is what I like. And you can even look for volunteer opportunities to continue to build those skill sets if, if you're having trouble finding those jobs. Raise your profile. Volunteer, right? Get on special projects. Volunteer at different organizations. You get to learn new skills. You get to network with more people. Be prepared with a solid resume and a pitch about your skills. We practiced a little bit today, but it was 10 minutes and you know, you didn't really get into it, it's okay to do homework after this and think about, really, okay, now I get the full picture. What are my transferable skills? If I had to pick from the 50 that I identified that I'm good at, which ones do I want to take with me going forward? Any questions from this page? All right. Well, I'm going to ask you to just think a quick second on regards to page 9 and set yourself a networking goal. All right. Pick a networking goal, internal, external, certain organization, maybe, you know, meet this many people in a week, or to genuinely connect with someone, or to even go to the career counseling um, services, all right? 
do you know someone that is halfway there or do you know someone that's all the way there? Are they in the organization that interests you? Do they have the position that interests you? I would encourage you to always be armed with your pitch of your transferable skills and your questions about their skills and to understand their work environment. Mm. So you always, you know your skills and which ones you'd like to use for the majority of your job. But we also want to make sure that we would like this place, that this place is, is pleasant. Mm -hmm. So I would tell you to always be you know, armed with your pitch, if you will, in regards to your transferable skills, mm -hmm. and then be armed with your questions. So if, you know, if, if we meet and you're like, oh, you work for you know, Disney? Mm -hmm. you know, what is it? Disney sounds like a great company, but what is it that you like about working for Disney? You know, things like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, tell me about your career. You're always welcome to be armed with that question, too. Mm -hmm. People like to talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. That came up today. So yes, good question. Any additional questions? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Good luck. Right? Yeah, you did.